Here's a look at what we have on this week's show. VA opens the first green LEED certified outpatient clinic on Fort Meade in Maryland. The 60th Fisher House Worldwide was opened at the San Antonio VA Medical Center. And a VA muscle function study in Alabama is encouraging for victims of Parkinson's. We've got those stories and more coming up on VA News. I'm Basil White with the Office of Policy and Planning. And I'm Judy Howell with the Employee Education System. Thank you for tuning in today. As many of you know, VA has greatly expanded access to health care for the nation's veterans for the better part of the past 20 years by opening hundreds of new community-based outpatient clinics called CBOCs all over the country. Since the mid-1990s, VA has used the clinics, vet centers, mobile care units, and telemedicine technology to make care available to veterans near or where they live instead of making them come to VA. More than 80,000 veterans living in Anne Arundel and Howard counties just south of Baltimore and north of Washington now have access to health care services at the new Fort Meade VA Outpatient Clinic. The Fort Meade Community-Based Outpatient Clinic, or CBOC, is the first VA outpatient clinic in the nation to be Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design certified. Designed to meet federal green policy requirements, the CBOC includes a geothermal mechanical system built under its parking lot, water reduction plumbing features, low-emitting window glazing, a controllability lighting system, and low-emitting materials used for the building's interior. Frida Alexander, the business manager of Managed Care Clinical Center, oversees the management of CBOC centers in Maryland and explained how the location of this clinic is especially important. The benefits of having a CBOC here on the Fort Meade installation is it helps transition soldiers that are leaving the active duty into the civilian, uh, civilian sector and it gives them a smooth transition and it cuts down on the travel time that veterans would have to travel either going to our Glen Burnie CBOC or into Baltimore. So it's a nice local location that that will give them greater assistance in uh, quality care. Some of the services at Fort Meade VA Outpatient Clinic include general outpatient care, preventative health and education services, various medical screenings, telehealth services, and referrals to specialized programs and inpatient services available throughout the VA Maryland health care system. The 60th Fisher House Worldwide was officially opened at the Audie Murphy VA Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas, just before Easter. VA, Fisher House Foundation, and federal, state, and local officials presided over the ribbon-cutting ceremony, which also marked the fifth Fisher House supporting hospitals with level one polytrauma rehabilitation centers. And as we open this house, we can now support our nation's fifth level one polytrauma center and fulfills a pledge we made several years ago that every level one polytrauma center in this nation would be supported by a Fisher House. We understand the stress that families endure while trying to care for their loved one. We understand how critical a family's support is in the recovery of a patient. We understand because we know that a family's love is good medicine. I would like to share with you two things we have learned about what these homes mean to veterans and their families. First, the healing power of having a family's love close by cannot be overstated. And second, families themselves need a warm and welcoming place to renew after a long day spent worrying about a loved one. Also addressing the gathering for the opening was World War II Medal of Honor recipient Major General Patrick Brady who presented a plaque from the Medal of Honor Society to Ken Fisher. The plaque recognizes Zachary and Elizabeth Fisher for founding the Fisher House Construction Program in 1990. You know, my daughter was in the invasion of Iraq. I've been almost dead many times, but I never went through what I went through when that little girl was in that invasion. And I heard about the firefights and running out of fuel and food and all that stuff. For the first time in my life, I realized what the families go through. Before that, I never gave it a thought. Uh, but the families truly suffer as much as those of us who go on behalf of this country. 
The 13,400 square foot South Texas VA Fisher House has 16 bedroom suites, each equipped with a private handicapped accessible bathroom. Families share a common kitchen, laundry facilities, spacious dining room and living room, and a library with toys for young children. Families using Fisher Houses pay nothing. 50% of the cost is shared by local businesses and citizens. There are Fisher Houses throughout the United States and in Germany, and the Foundation has supported the building of the Fisher House United Kingdom, which will serve British military families. Researchers at the VA Medical Center in Birmingham, Alabama are studying the basic function of human muscle to promote better health care in older veterans. Recently, those efforts have focused on patients suffering from Parkinson's disease, and there have been some encouraging results. Here's a report from the current edition of The American Veteran. When Riley Nelson was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, his doctor told him that regular exercise would increase his strength and improve his agility. I always had strong legs, but my upper body strength had deteriorated. But this isn't a regular gym or a normal workout, because he volunteered to be part of a research program on strength training for older adults. The study, which begins in the gym and continues in a special research lab, is a unique partnership between VA and the University of Alabama, Birmingham. In the 1970s, VA realized it needed to plan for an aging veteran population and began establishing Geriatric Research Educational and Clinical Centers, or GRECs, to provide specialized care for our older veterans. Today, there are 20 GRECs across the country and research is a major component of their mission. Dr. Richard Allman, the director of the Birmingham Atlanta GREC, says this program is an effort to determine how exercise can help older people with Parkinson's disease improve their strength and mobility. Parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive neurologic disorder that leads to problems with gait and balance and puts these individuals at risk for falling, which is a big problem. And exercise appears to be and is likely to be an ideal prescription or an ideal medicine for helping the individual with Parkinson's disease to learn how to better coordinate the brain function with their muscle function. Dr. Allman says VA and the University of Alabama Birmingham have complementary strengths and resources and their partnership on studies like this one enables VA to do more research, offer better programs, and provide even better care for their patients. Like the other participants in the study, Riley goes to a special gym three times a week for scientifically designed and carefully monitored workouts that one day may help explain why older people lose muscle mass and, more importantly, how they can rebuild it. For Riley, it's an opportunity to help himself and other seniors, many of whom are veterans. When I was a poster child for symptoms of Parkinson's, and I wanted to be able to do anything I could to help somebody else who had those same systems live with it because it's, it can be debilitating. Dr. Marcus Bamman, the director of the UAB Center for Exercise Medicine, leads the study and says his team has introduced a high-intensity exercise routine for aging adults with Parkinson's. He then studies the results in a research lab. We know that over a period of decades of aging, yes. both the Parkinson's patients and the healthy older adult have, have suffered some level of muscle atrophy, some amount of muscle loss. So we're interested in restoring that. We call that muscle regrowth. The question is, exactly what impact does high intensity exercise have on the go. aging process on patients with Parkinson's disease? We think that it can have significant benefit for both uh, restoration of muscle function in terms of strength, power development, reduced fatigability, improved balance and coordination. Riley has only been in the program for three months and he has already seen an improvement in his strength and agility. In the mornings I used to get up out of bed and feel like I was going to fall over and I don't even have to brace myself to get out of bed anymore. Danny Fuqua, another vet with Parkinson's disease, also volunteered for the workout study. And, like Riley, he's noticed a significant improvement in his physical condition. I feel stronger, feel more confident, and I think it's certainly going to, in the long run, help me uh, maintain mobility. If a person wants to maintain their independence, 
They want to continue to live in the home that they've had for decades, and they want to be able to get up and down the stairs, and they want to be able to function in their community well. Strength is absolutely critical. Parkinson's has been ruled a presumptive disease by VA. That means veterans with Parkinson's disease seeking disability compensation or health care do not have to prove their symptoms are service connected if they were exposed to Agent Orange or other herbicides during military service. And if they served in country during the Vietnam War, they are presumed to have been exposed to Agent Orange. President Obama has challenged Americans to win the future through better education and greater innovation to outbuild competitors in the 21st century. The White House began a program called Champions of Change, Winning the Future Across America to recognize people who do extraordinary things to make a difference in their communities. Recently, the President honored and hosted 14 women veterans as Champions of Change. You may recognize some of their names. Many of them are directly or indirectly involved with VA facilities and services. They are Tia Christopher, Sherry Derrickson, Marsha Tanze Four, Marilyn Harris, Don Halfacre, Becky Canis, Ginger Miller, VA Chief of Chaplains Priscilla Mont, Stacy Pearsall, Michelle Racicott, Captain Glenna Tinney, Brigadier General Wilma Vaught, Kayla Williams, and Natasha Young. They all have remarkable stories of advocacy and positive change for their fellow women veterans which you can read at the White House Champions of Change website on the screen. And at this web address, you can nominate anyone you believe is worthy of being a champion of change. Did you know? VA proposed a $157 billion 2014 budget last month. Here are some of the details. The top priorities of the proposed 2014 budget are to expand access to benefits and services, to eliminate the claims backlog in 2015, and to end homelessness in 2015. The proposed budget totals almost $153 billion, of which $86 billion would be for mandatory programs like veterans benefits and compensation and pension, and $66.5 billion would be discretionary spending, including nearly $58 billion for medical care. That's a 4% increase over 2013. VA plans to use people, processes, and technology in the effort to eliminate the claims backlog, with technology investments being the top priority in the 2014 budget. $155 million would go to the Veterans Benefits Management System and more than $136 million to the Veteran Claims Intake Program to convert paper documents into e-folders. VA plans to invest $1.4 billion in 2014 to end veteran homelessness, an increase of $41 million over 2013. $300 million would pay for support services for veteran families, $278 million for the VA HUD Supportive Housing Program, and $250 million for the Grant and Per Diem Program to help local agencies serve homeless veterans. The 2014 budget proposes mandatory funds of $1 billion for the Veterans Job Corps Initiative to leverage veteran skills and experience into civilian employment and put tens of thousands back to work helping protect and rebuild America. That's all we have this week. Thank you for watching today. Let us know if you have any story suggestions. Here's the information to reach VA News producer Ken McKinnon. I'm Judy Howell. And I'm Basil White. If you're a veteran or in the military, thank you for your service. For everyone else, thanks for watching out for and taking care of our brave defenders.